Next topic, hair. Here are the standards, the objectives, pause and peruse. Okay, an introduction to hair. Okay, so hair. It projects above the surface of the skin. It's non-living. It's dead keratinized cells, just like skin. It's produced in hair follicles. And it's elastic. It stretches about 30% when wet. So there's an elastic test for hair, like you wet um, a group of hairs and pull and stretch them. And if the hair is healthy, it should bounce back. If it breaks um, or if it doesn't bounce back, it can indicate some hair health issues. There are about 2.5 million hairs on your body. Where do you not find hair? On the palms and soles, lips, and parts of your external genitalia. What are some functions of hair? Well, it functions as an early warning system. So there's a sensory nerve that is linked to each and every hair follicle. So we can feel the movement of individual hairs. So it may help prevent injury. Like you can feel a mosquito that maybe just rustle the hair. It's also the reason why if you have like a loose hair and it's touching uh, part of your skin, it can sort of drive you a little bit wild until you find it. Hair on your head. Well, we have about 500,000 roughly hairs on our head. It protects the scalp from UV light. It cushions a light blow to the head, okay? Not a swift punch or something. It provides some insulation. Hair in our nose and in our ears, it guards the entrances and it helps prevent the entry of foreign particles. Our eyelashes and our eyebrows, they protect our eyes. It helps keep foreign particles from entering our eyes. The erector pili muscle, so it's a smooth muscle it's from the papillary dermis to con connective tissue surrounding a hair follicle. And when it's stimulated, it pulls on the follicle and the hair stands up, goosebumps. This can be due to fear, to rage, or to cold, among some other emotions. What causes goosebumps? Yep, the contraction of that erector pili muscle. What are the parts of a hair shaft? Well, we have three main parts. The hair shaft is the part of the hair that comes above the skin's surface. Three layers, cuticle, cortex, medulla. Let's start from the outside going in. Cuticle. It's like a, the surface layer, it's like overlapping shingle like it's for protection, the cuticle. Cortex, um, that's the next um, inner layer and it has the color of the hair um, and it's responsible for adding a lot of strength to the hair. And then the medulla, which um, is sometimes missing in light colored hair, but it's the core and it's flexible keratin. So it adds some flexibility to hair. So what are the parts of the hair shaft? So A, B, and C, do you remember what they are? There's medulla, there's cortex, there's cuticle, which is which? So A, cortex, outside is um, outside of the medulla. B, the medulla in the center. And cuticle, C, that's the outer layer. All right, what about hair follicles? All right, hair follicles. They project deep into the dermis. The wall of a hair follicle is all the layers of the epidermis. So it's kind of like the epidermis is going this across the skin, then just comes in to make the hair follicle and then continues on. Then goes in to make the next hair follicle. Okay, so it makes sense. The wall of a hair follicle is all the layers of the epidermis. As a sheath of connective tissue around that, okay, for some protection, at the base, there's a papilla and it's like that bulb where it bulges out. Okay, so at the base of that bulb is a papilla and it has capillaries and nerves. So it provides sensation, but also blood supply. 
So follicle shape and size. So the shape. So if you have straight hair, your follicles most li likely shaped round. If you have curly hair, your follicles most likely shaped flattened. And the kinkier your hair is, the flatter it is. But the size is also important. So if you have a large follicle, your hair is going to be thicker. And if you have small follicles, your hair will be thinner. So it can be straight and thick. It could be thin and curly, okay? What shape is the follicle for straight hair? It's round. You can see as it gets more kinky, the follicle gets flatter and flatter. All right, let's talk about hair growth. How does hair grow? Well, there's a division of the epithelial stem cells at the base of the follicles. Remember, the epidermis just comes down like this, so there still is a layer with stem cells, and it's um, where it's around the hair papilla. The cells undergo keratinization and die. New cells are pushed to the surface, and the hair lengthens. All right, let's go through the hair growth cycle. So we have anagen, that's active growth. So the hair is actually dividing in this stage. Then we have catagen, which is, okay, it's stopping the growth, the papilla starts to retract. And then telogen is the resting stage. So it's act, anagen, catagen, telogen. Your hair on your scalp grows in anagen for about two to five years. And when new growth begins, so intelligent, it's resting. So the hair just may stay in place. And then when the follicle switches back to antigen again and it starts to grow, it may push out the old hair. And that's when uh, we shed our hairs. OK, um, hair on other parts of your body does not grow as long. Otherwise, it would be as long as the hair on your scalp, which would be weird if that's how long your arm hair was everywhere. Okay, so what are those stages of hair growth in order? So the stages of the hair growth cycle in order. Do you remember that little phrase I gave you to remember it? It's act, antigen, catagen, telogen. Telogen is resting, and when the hair restarts to grow in antigen, it pushes out the old hair. Now, what about hair color? So melanin produced by melanocytes at the hair papilla gives our hair color. So eumelanin produces brown and black colors. Pheomelanin produces red and yellow colors. So depending which type and how much, that determines your hair color. Now what about white hair? The change to white hair is typically gradual. It's not as though all of the hairs on the head change at the same time. But melanin production stops, and when that happens, the hair becomes white. Also, it could be from air bubbles in the hair shaft. So that's another reason that the color of the hair changes. Why does hair turn white? Two main reasons. Melanocytes stop producing melanin, and then there can also be some um, air bubbles in the hair shaft. And that's it. That's hair. I hope you learned something new today.